What's going on? Welcome to the video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Gold Clip plugin by Schwab Digital. So let's hop right in and get to it. So the good folks from Schwab Digital sent me this plugin a while back, and I've been using this thing for a while now, and I love it. I love it so much that I had to do a video for the YouTube channel. So to begin with, since this is primarily a clipping plugin, I think it would be beneficial to just quickly go over what clipping is. So clipping is different from compression and limiting. Compression is going to turn down any signal that goes above a set loudness threshold. And it's going to utilize attack and release times to control the timing of that audio being turned down. Now, a limiter is going to do the same thing, but in a much more fast and instantaneous way. A limiter is essentially a compressor with an infinite ratio, and it tries to reduce peaks while also minimizing audible distortion. But if you push a limiter too hard, you will likely get distortion and pumping that isn't very pleasing to the ear. Now, a clipper, on the other hand, is different. A clipper is going to clip off any signal that goes above a set loudness ceiling instead of trying to quickly turn it down like a limiter or a compressor. A good way to think about how clipping works is to picture what happens when a piece of analog hardware is pushed so hard and it tries to deliver an output voltage beyond its capability. It physically can't make the audio any more louder, so it begins to clip off the top of the waveform. And this is going to add harmonic distortion to the audio, which can be a nice effect when used properly, but it really depends on the hardware or gear that is being clipped. Now, Gold Clip is a plugin that is modeled after two famous mastering converters that were known for the loudness that could be created from them through clipping and saturation. Now, this plugin also has some additional features added to it that make it more than just a clipper, and I'll be sure to go over those in this video. But first, let's go ahead and just cover the basics. So here on the plugin, you can see I have it loaded in FL Studio. Uh, the first thing to kind of go over would be the clip ceiling right here on the left side of the plugin. And the way that this works is if you leave it at zero decibels like it is right here by default, then anything that tries to go above zero decibels is going to get clipped. Now, you likely won't have your audio signal coming in around zero decibels in most mixing and mastering situations, so you won't get any clipping occurring if you just left the ceiling at zero decibels. So you can do two things. You can either use the input gain knob right here to increase your audio signal and push it up to the ceiling to start achieving some clipping, or you can leave the input gain at zero decibels and instead you could bring the clip ceiling down to where your audio is actually peaking at coming into the plugin. And that's typically the approach that I tend to use 90% of the time. And then up here in this box, it'll show you how much clipping you're getting so right now it's showing negative 92 decibels, so we're not getting any clipping. If you were to get clipping, what you're going to see is a positive value um, right here displayed in this box representing how much of the uh, audio waveform is being clipped. Now down here in the bottom left of the plugin, it's gonna show you the maximum amount of clipping that you get and also where exactly in the audio that clipping is occurring in terms of minutes and seconds. And this is useful because you could be getting like one to two decibels of clipping and everything is sounding nice. And then all of a sudden you get five dB of clipping. Well, once you know where that peak is at, you can go to that part in the song and investigate to see if you can't control that peak before the audio hits the clipper. Next up over here on the left side, we have the box tone. So you have flat, you have classic, and you have modern. Now the box tone is essentially a linear phase EQ that affects the signal from 1000 Hertz and above by adding some contour and low pass filtering. Now this is a very subtle effect, but I usually leave this on flat. Classic seems to be more gentle with the uh, box tone Tone, and then modern is a little bit more noticeable and you can see a little bit of that contouring effect. But as I said, I usually leave this on flat, but go ahead and experiment um, when you test this out on your audio. Now, next up below the box tone, we have the clipper algorithm. So there's basically classic clipping, modern clipping, and then there's also hard clipping. So modern is a soft knee clipper and then classic is a medium knee clipper and then hard is a hard knee clipper. So they're all going to clip the signal differently and have different sounds to them. So um, for me, when I you know dial in my clipping, I just go ahead and cycle through all three of them. 
and they're all gonna trigger the clipping a little bit differently. Then you have the gold section down here, which lets you choose between modern and classic. Now this gold setting right here is gonna be correlated with the gold knob right here in the middle of the plugin. Now the gold knob can be a little confusing, so let me just read to you what the manual says. Gold is fundamentally different than a compressor because it does not rely on attack and release times to perform compression. Gold performs a sample by sample analysis of the clip signal and compresses the audio, leaving transients largely untouched but increases sustain. Gold compresses the audio but does so without the artifacts associated with attack and release on classical compressors. The more aggressive of clipping that you do, the less clean gold processing will sound. It is suggested to push the signal as close to the clip point as possible but minimize clipping when using gold for loudness. So essentially, as you increase the gold knob right here, you're going to bring up the sustain of the audio, which is gonna help you with loudness. Now, with the modern gold setting um, selected, you can only boost the gold knob by two and a half dB. And then when you have the classic gold setting selected, you can increase the gold knob all the way up to six decibels. And then below the gold knob, you have this unity gain selector right here. And this is gonna level match the audio after the loudness is added from gold processing. So that way, if you had this turned on, you can kind of really hear the effect that the gold processing is adding to your signal because it's gonna be level matched. Next up, we have the alchemy knob over here to the right of the plugin. And this is basically like a high shelf EQ curve and it kind of pulls down on the mid and high frequencies as the clipping occurs to soften out the harmonics. So you can only pull the alchemy knob up by one decibel. So it's very subtle, but it can help make the clipping sound more warm and less harsh. And then over here to the right, we have the output gain control. So this can just help you uh, control or adjust the level of the signal leaving the plugin. Um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna go ahead and return that to zero. Now over here on the right, you also have this wet dry control. So this is gonna help you dial in a specific amount of this clipping effect if you wanted to. So the two parameters, wet and dry right here are linked right now. You can see that the, the link control is engaged. So when you pull down on the wet knob, it's going to simultaneously pull up on the dry knob. So that way you can start to get some of that original dry signal being blended in with the clip signal. And then down here at the bottom, you have these mute controls, so that way you can mute the wet signal and only listen to the dry signal, or vice versa, you can mute the dry signal and only hear the, the clipped version of the audio. So that way, you can really monitor what's going on and how this effect is being applied to your signal. Now you also have a delta button right here that engages a phase flip of the original signal compared to the clip signal. So you can basically just hear the distortion and clipping that is being added um, using this uh, delta button. Now you have a few different uh, presets up here at the top to kind of start with. And then also you have an AB system which would allow you to compare two different versions of the audio. So if you wanted to tweak some settings and then compare it to another version of the, uh, of the gold clip plugin, uh, you can do that right here with the AB uh, system. And then lastly, you have the bypass button up here in the top left. All right, so now that we've explained the plugin, let's just go ahead and take a listen to how this thing sounds. First off, I'm gonna throw it on the drum bus and kind of just mess around with some of the settings.
Okay, so as you saw, I was getting around 4 dB of clipping on the drums and I cycled through classic, modern, and hard to kind of hear the different clipping algorithms. Um, but I think I like the, uh, the hard clipping the best. Now we also utilize the uh, gold knob right here. And when I had it on modern, I cranked it all the way up and you really couldn't um, hear too much of a difference, right? Because there's only two and a half decibels of gold processing allowed when you have the uh, modern selected. So I swapped it over to classic and then you could really hear, you know, what the gold setting was doing to the signal. So let's go ahead and just play it again and I'll crank it up again so that way we can kind of focus in on the gold processing. Okay, so as you could probably hear when I cranked the gold knob all the way up to its max setting, the low end sustain of all of the drum elements kind of just took a step forward and there was a lot more additional weight and body to them. Now the gold processing in conjunction with the clipping is going to give you a certain sound and a certain loudness without necessarily eating up a lot of headroom. And remember over here you have the alchemy knob. So a lot of times when you start clipping aggressively, you're going to hear like that crunchiness and harshness of uh, the drums in the top end because of all of these harmonics. There's just a lot going on in the mid and high frequency range. So alchemy is just pulling down like a high shelf and kind of dampening or lessening that aggressiveness in the top end. So let's go ahead and pull the clip ceiling down a little bit more and that way we're getting some more uh, heavy clipping and then we'll basically increase the alchemy knob to see if we can't kind of tame some of that harshness. Okay, so the difference is very subtle, but it is smoothing out the top end and just kind of making things a little bit more pleasing to the ear. Okay, so you have to remember that we are getting 5 dB of clipping, which for me is typically more than I would usually clip on the drums, but going with a heavy amount of clipping is the best way to kind of hear what's going on with the alchemy knob because that's when you're gonna to tend to get a lot of that top end distortion. And so if you want to contain that, the alchemy knob is really gonna help do that in a subtle way. So let's go ahead and just reset everything back to the default settings. And then um, let's go ahead and just dial it in the way that I usually would do this um, in the mixing process when I'm applying it to the drums. Okay, so that's sounding pretty good right there. It's kind of subtle. I'm only getting two and a half dB of clipping, but 
with the uh, one decibel of gold processing and then the alchemy set at 0.2 dB, I felt like the drums were in a good spot. And if you were paying attention over here on the peak, uh, the peak meter, we were peaking at around minus five dB with the uh, bypass button turned on. And then uh, when I disengaged the bypass and allowed the gold clip plugin to affect the audio, we are now peaking at minus seven and a half. So we saved like two dB of headroom and that's really gonna help you when you're trying to get your mix loud. Because with the gold clip plugin, you're essentially maintaining the perceived loudness um, or actually increasing the perceived loudness in certain cases, but you're lowering your peak level. So you're saving headroom, which is gonna allow you to kind of drive your whole entire mix uh, further without you know, touching that final limiter ceiling at the end during the mastering process, right? So you have a little bit more space to crank the loudness up without necessarily um, engaging that final limiter. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and take a listen to how the Gold Clip plugin would sound and operate in a mastering scenario. So I have this loaded um, just before the final limiter, and what I'm gonna do is just press play and kind of mess around. Uh, remember that when we were reading about the gold processing here, it did say that the gold processing sounds the best um, when you're getting you know minimal amounts of clipping. So if you're going for loudness with the gold processing knob, basically what you wanna do is kinda of drive the signal up close to that ceiling, and then when you're just getting a little bit of clipping, kinda of just leave it there and then dial in the gold processing. Now for me, when I'm going for a transparent type of clipping, um, where I'm not gonna be adding a lot of clipping, then I like to go with the hard clipper. Now do keep in mind that when I drive this input signal up to the clip ceiling, we are gonna get much louder because we're essentially pushing things closer to the ceiling. So uh, please be aware that, you know, when I do press play, things are gonna get louder. So um, adjust your volume as needed. Excuse me, I did not know that you'd be the one that I could love. No, I thought I had it all figured out. Guess it was faith that brought you back around falling, but you were right there to stop me from becoming unaware I need. Promise me that you will stay I need your love in every way I finally found the words to say You're my baby and I don't want you to go Cause being with you is really helping me grow I'm riding the highs now instead of the lows So put it in gear and put your foot on the gas I'm ready to leave everything in the past Excuse me, I did not know that you'd be the one that I could love no It was faith that brought you back around falling But you were right there to stop me from becoming unaware I need your love and all of your life Tonight and every night Alright, so as y'all can see right there, I was getting about 1 dB of clipping And as I started to increase the gold processing knob the low end elements in the mix like the kick and the 808 just took a step forward now as i drug that gold processing knob up a little too high you could really hear the uh the mix kind of just sounded uncontrolled and a little bit too powerful so you definitely want to be um you know subtle with the gold processing knob when you're mastering because you don't want to be too drastic with any one effect and for me when i'm using this in a mastering situation i always have the gold usually set on the uh, modern setting because you can only boost by two and a half DB, right? So it kind of limits how much of this effect you can add, which to me is a good thing. Now with the gold knob and the clipping working in tandem, you're getting more headroom for your mix while also either maintaining or increasing the perceived loudness because now you're controlling the peaks with the clipper. So if you go down by two DB, but you don't actually get quieter, you now have two more decibels of loudness that you can get out of your mix. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed the content. Please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about Gold Clip and I'll see you all in the next video.